Glory to God. Somebody lift your hands and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, shout, I'm expecting. I'm expecting. Tonight's my night. Tonight's my night. Lord, Lord, I'm coming, I'm coming. To, get to get everything you have for me. Right now. Things that are going to change me. Come on, don't let me lose you. Things that are going to equip me. Enlighten me. Empower me. I'm going higher tonight. Ain't no doubt about it. I'm going higher. In the name of Jesus. Now, do you believe that? How do people act that are believers? Come on now, how do you act if you believe that? <laughs> hey, before you're seated, I just want to say thank you so much for welcoming uh, my wife and I back to this awesome powerhouse church. We have a little guest with us also. I just want to introduce her to, this is Cassidy Elise. This is number three of three. Yeah. We're very proud of her. We're proud of all of our children and our poodle. And uh, I want to say this from the bottom of our heart. Thank you, Pastor Todd, Pastor Daphne, everybody here at Seminole. We love you. So thankful. You cannot put into words the relationship that we have. I mean, it, it's just, it's a divine connection. It's a treasure. And for that, we're so grateful. And uh, so glad that we're part of your crazy friends. Amen. We get to tear holes in things and tear off roofs and drop our paralyzed friends, if we have any, glory to God, down on Jesus. So there's something that's been on me ever since I got here into town. Truth be told, it was already starting to hit me a little bit. When Pastor Todd invited us and asked us if we would come and minister, that date shifted two or three times, at least twice that I know of. And every time he'd say, are, are you available? And I said, I'm available. I'll make myself available. I don't need a drum roll for that. It's just, that's my heart. That's just, that's the kind of person I am. I don't need a drum roll. I was just, I meant that. But there's been a shift that's taking place in this church. And it is a shift that is positioning into the end times that this church was raised up to operate in. It's not merely a vision for a pastor and a pastor's wife. It is a vision collectively for this area, this region, and even globally, says the Lord. This church is being positioned and has, says the Lord, been positioned for such a time as this to operate and, yes, even lead out in areas that others have refused to go in. But because you have obeyed me, and because you have adjusted, and because you have shifted with me, you will be right in the zone of the sweet spot of the call of God for this vision, this church, this region, and globally, says the Lord. All those that have hooked up, all those that have come aboard, all those that have almost seemed to collectively been gathering together again like eagles. <laughs> They're coming together for this time and for this moment. They're hearing my voice. They're hearing my heart. And I've heard their cry. Oh, and don't take it lightly, says the Lord. For this hour that you're stepping into, this church is raising up generals in the faith and in the Spirit. Miracles, signs, and wonders. The manifestations that you heard about last night. It will be commonplace, but will never lose holiness, says the Lord. Now this is what I'm hearing. If you believe that's for you, I want you to lift your hands right now. And I want you to receive that right now. And I want you to let Him know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, Lord, I 
dedicate myself to you tonight fresh. Come on, make that fresh dedication. Not even a rededication, a fresh dedication that God, I'm going with you, I'm going with this vision, and I'm wholeheartedly selling out to you fresh again tonight. My God, something's happening right over here. Thank you, Jesus. That person right over here, you're feeling that just starting to surge through your body. You're feeling that consume your spirit. It's almost... Who is that? That fire that's on you right over here. Quickly, come up here. Quickly, 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 quickly. Fire in the name of Jesus. There it goes, right through you. Now, ushers, I have to warn you. All three of these ministries that you're having in, ain't one of them fall normal. Sometimes they step out and they fall out. I... Honestly, we're at a place in our ministry where I don't care if you fall out or not. The Lord told me years ago, He said, it's not the falling out where the power is, it's in the rising up. Praise you, Jesus. Every hand lifted, every eye shut. Out of your heart, begin to tell Him you love Him. The one who made the blind to see is moving here in front of me, moving here in front of me. The one who made the deaf to hear is silencing my every fear, silencing my every fear. Oh, I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. Come on, if you believe, lift your hands. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. The God who does impossible is reaching out to make me whole, reaching out to make me whole. The one who put death in its place, his life is flowing through my veins, his life is flowing through my veins. Oh, I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. Come on, if you believe. Yes. I believe in you. Oh, I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. the God of miracles. Yes, here you are. Who I believe in you. Who I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. Who you are. You are. You are. A wonder-working God. Yes, you are. You are a wonder-working God. Yes, you are. You are a wonder-working God. I know you are. Oh, you are a wonder-working God. Come on, I believe. Who I believe in you. Who I believe in you. Oh, yes, you are who I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. Who I believe, I 
believe in you. Oh, I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. Come on, tell him. Oh, I believe, I believe. Oh, I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. Oh, you are, you are a wonder-working God. Yes, you are, you are a wonder-working God. Yes, you are. 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 You are a wonder-working God. I believe in you. Oh, you're, you're the God of miracles. Oh, I believe. I believe in you. I believe in you. Oh, you're the God of miracles. Oh, I believe. Oh, I believe in you. Oh, I believe. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. Yes. The God who was and is to come. Or oh, the power. Or oh, the power of the risen one. Or oh, the God. The God who brings the dead to life. You're the God of miracles. You're the God of miracles. Come on, sing it. Oh, the God who was and is to come. The power. Jesus. The power of the risen one. The God who brings the dead to life. You're the God of miracles. The God of miracles. <laughs> Can anybody else sense that blanket of glory that's in here already? Come on, if you can, lift your hands. There's something that I wanted to avoid. <laughs> But I can't get away from it. So we're going to flow with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. There are people here right now that are in this place, in this church, that you've been needing a breakthrough. And, and the conference is called Breakthrough. But there's something happening right now. It's already begun. I felt that wave over here. And you're seeing young men over here on their knees and different way we're wanting to get to the message or, or you may not want to hear this but th there's a message that God's wanting to give you personally not just corporately there's a message he's wanting to give you and I'm telling you these altars are open right now I'm not going to give a call like you would think oh if you're in sin or whatever that's between you and God but I'm telling you if you've never been on your knees and on your face before this living God before I want you to run up here and I want you to pour it out unto God and I want you to get before him and surrender like you've never had before come on all over this place oh come on something is 
is breaking in here. It's got to happen in here for it to go higher. There's some things that are manifesting right now in your life, in your mind, in your spirit, in your body. Oh, come on. Don't let your flesh dictate to your spirit, man, that you're going to stay grounded and anchored in a, a, play, a place. You decide right now, my spirit, man, is going to rule and reign. Come on in the name of Jesus as they sing this again. Come up here and rededicate. Come up here and pour it out to God. This is not a traditional altar call. This is us calling out and crying out to a holy God. Move upon every single person here, Lord God. Holy Ghost, move upon each and every person. all the glory we give you all the honor we give you all the praise we give you all the glory we give you all the honor we give you all the praise there's a family here right now head of the house grab your spouse and come and pour your life out before the Lord right now with your family. And that spirit of division will leave your household. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Such holiness in this house. Come here, young man, before you leave. Come here. Whew. Lift your hands as you walk this way. The power of God comes on you. Never let pride keep you from going higher in God. Jesus.
You know, sometimes we don't think that leaving our seat has anything to do with anything or moving up closer and coming up to the altar. Positionally, there is some things that God will require from us. That when we step out in faith, He's not thinking this spot right here is more holy than that spot. He's looking to see if positionally you'll start to have the hunger that Peter had when he wanted to change positions and get out of the boat. There's some things happening in this church positionally. There's things happening in households positionally. There are things happening individually in your heart positionally. And there's been too many people hanging out, sitting in a boat near Jesus, letting Him sleep in the bottom and just near Jesus. He doesn't want you just to be near Him. He wants to consume you and He wants you to operate like Him. He's wanting you to get out of the boat and change positions. There's somebody here that even the pastors don't know. You've been hearing voices in your head. It's been really alarming to you. Come here and position yourself before Him. Get on your knees and pour out to Him. I know this isn't the skinny jeans, skinny latte, skinny message that we're so used to today. But my God, I'm believing we're coming back to where we will cry out to a holy God. A God who does answer by fire still today. A God who is still ready to not just do miracles in you, but see miracles done through you. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe in this God of miracles. I believe, I believe. Come on, let's sing this to him now with everything you got. Come on, band, let's pick it up. There's some things happening and transitioning right now. Oh, we cry out to you, Lord. Somebody cry out to him right now. Oh, God, we love you, Lord Jesus. We cry out to you, Father. Come on, lift up your voice. Lift up your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, let the mouth cry out to God. We cry out to you, Lord. For you're the God of miracles. Jesus. Oh, I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. Heaven is not opening, it's already open. The God who brings the dead to life, you're the God of miracles, the God of miracles, the God who was and is to come. So Father, I thank you right now. What was trying to divide is no longer divided. What the enemy was trying to darken, light is now on the scene. Everything, every assignment, every attack that the enemy has been trying to bring against this vision, against this church, against the pastors, against the different households. I break that power now in the name of Jesus and I reinforce the fact that the vision is coming to pass. The dream is coming to pass. It shall go forth and it will go forth boldly, says the Lord. Hallelujah. holding your business back I come against it and break that power right now whatever's been holding your church back whatever's been holding your ministry back whatever's been holding your children back I come against it and break that power right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth 
the cup who was and is to come. The power of the risen one. You're the God who brings the dead to life. You're the God of miracles. You're the God of miracles. I believe in you. My God, my God, my God. My God. God miracle. Just feeling waves of glory. I can I have to keep moving because I can hardly stand. It feels like this. Ooh. Praise you, Jesus. Somebody say that I believe in you. I believe in you, the God of miracles. Thank you, Jesus. Where's that man that was in the walker? Bring him up here. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. The moment you stand and take three steps this way, the power of God comes on you and the strength comes on you. Strengthen his spine right now. Strengthen his hips right now. Strengthen his knees in the name of Jesus and his balance. Come on, let's start walking. Come on. In Jesus' name. Come on. Cartilage is growing back in your kneecaps right now. I give you praise, Lord. There it is. Your hip is being replaced right now. I give you praise, Lord Jesus. There it goes. Strengthen that hip. In the name of Jesus. There it is. There it is. There it is. Lift your hands, sir. Lift your hands and praise it. Come here, sister. Come here. Do you know this man? What's on you? Uh, love. <laughs> Just hope that God can do this and that this man will be healed by the end of the night. <laughs> what if I told you he was already healed right now, 2,000 years ago? Fire! Honor in the name of Jesus. You know what? Pick her back up. How old are you? I'm 15. 15. Ha 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 ha. She lebe en jidi bosgide beste. Such a desire already. The reason why you're being consumed ha ha and overwhelmed with this is that the broke she she lebreste is the compassion of God. The Lord told me you're a ha 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 ki she lebeste. You're going to be operating in great miracles. <laughs> Fire. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Father. Jesus. Come on now. You're getting stronger. Everybody pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Shilarengi shiki tela masanda. Jin de la raboko shilabreki sete. Jin de la mrandi de raboko shata. Come on, lift your hands, lift your voice in this place. Oh, braki selarengi de la raboki shin de la masinde. Jin de la randa de la mon selarengi de la maka shata. Keep walking with me. And pray.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I remember it was about two years ago, I think it was, maybe three years ago. You said you've been in a drought around here for a long time. You said we need rain. I remember we were in the, the pastor's office. And right before the service, I said, Lord, send the rain. And if you remember that, that, that night, the metal building became so loud with pelts of a torrential downpour of rain that it was drowning out the mic. People were crying out to God and thanking Him that night because the rain was coming down. What would that look like if we got that excited about the spiritual rain that's here tonight? Let it rain. Let it rain. Come on, what would that look like if we got just as excited about spiritual rain as we do natural rain? Let it rain in here, God. Let it rain in this place again now. Let it be a torrential downpour in this house tonight. Open the light gates of heaven. Let it rain. Come on, he's here. He's here. He's in you. He's in Greater is he that is in us than he that's in this world. He's manifesting. He's here. He's walking up and down the aisles. He's here right now. You want him? Just reach out and receive. Ah, the rain of God is in the. The rain of God is in this house. Let it rain. Let it rain. The Spirit of God is sweeping through here fresh. The winds of revival are sweeping through here fresh again tonight. How are we going to respond? Oh, come on. He's greater than football. He's greater than baseball. He's greater than any sporting event. He is not the... This daughter turned about, I don't know, 12 or 13. She wanted to start having more of her friends over, you know. You know how that works. At that time, we had a two-story house, you know. Her bedroom was right above ours. And what's crazy about that is, is I also liked my privacy. I mean, I'm a family guy. I love doing stuff, and I'm all in. I'm fifth gear, but... There was something about having three more other preteen young ladies in my house right above me making noise and laughing and giggling and all this kind of stuff all night long that just did not seem appealing to me as a dad. But as a good dad, I obeyed my wife. We've got, a, we've got an agreement. She says, you are definitely the head. And I'm like, thank you. She goes, and I'm the neck. <laughs> so she had her friends over, right? And they were doing their best to stay quiet. But then around 11 o'clock at night, I heard thump, 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 thump. 
And I looked at my wife and I said, what was that? I thought we had an agreement. I already knew it was impossible, especially looking back on things now. But it, it just got quiet. And then I heard little giggles. Like they knew they were doing that to mess with me. And I said, if you don't go up there, I'm going to go up there. You know, real macho stupo. And it happened again. And then it got louder. And I'm like, oh, what is going on up there? It was like all I could hear was laughter. And I was like, are they up there doing some kind of uh, Celtic Irish dance stuff all together? You know, what is going on? I could not understand it. And my wife said, let me handle it. Let me handle it. So she goes up there and she comes back down. And she was trying not to laugh. She says, they're really trying not to make any noise. But they just can't help it. They're right above you. And then the revelation hit me. Who's under our feet? Uh, you're not getting this. I said, who's under our feet? What would happen if we as the body of Christ started to learn what it felt like to dance and to shout and to laugh and to sing and not to be concerned about who's under our feet, but instead we did it on purpose. Instead we did it because we knew. Ah! Oh, come on! Yeah, celebrate! You are free! You are free! Whom the sun sets free is free indeed! You are free to dance! You are free to shout! You are free to run around this place! <laughs> you gotta understand the devil doesn't want you making any noise! But your shout doesn't just ring out all through earth. It doesn't just ring out all through heaven. It echoes through hell. Let it rain. And open the floodgates. Let it rain, oh let it rain, and open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, oh let it rain, open the floodgates of heaven. Chill. 
children. Oh, we cry out to you, Lord. What's God doing on you? <laughs> That's very similar to her testimony. What's happening here? <laughs> You're pregnant too, right? Let that baby, let that baby get filled with the Holy Ghost right there, fresh. Hallelujah. Look at that. Glory to God. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Was it you two that I was praying for last night? Come here. Come here. Whew. Come on up here. What's happening? <laughs> I cannot stand a church that will not let me do a message and all they want to do is get joyful. What kind of church would be full of joy? I did read somewhere that the joy of the Lord is our strength and laughter does good like a medicine. So stop judging somebody who's getting filled with the joy. Stop judging somebody who's getting strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Oh! Here, you want to sing in stereo? Rain on me. <laughs> Jesus. What's happening? <laughs> I just feel so overwhelmed with the love of God. <laughs> I'm a cameraman's nightmare. think this is becoming of a children's pastor what 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 if this gets off on my kids what if my kids go to your service and they come out laughing and full of the Holy Ghost and ready to take on the world and taking the Great Commission and being so serious about it that God has called me I may only be five I may only be six I may only seven but God has called me too to go and tell everybody about Jesus and lay hands on the sick and see them recover fire fire come on everyone sing it Father, tonight,
we come into your presence we thank you for the holiness that's also in manifestation here you can't have a move of the Holy Spirit and there not be holiness with it what happened to just coming to the altar and crying out to God not because something's wrong but because he's so right Jesus Lord, I pray this spreads like wildfire, not just through these sections, not just through these rows, not just through, hey, you get that? Not just through the rows. But I pray this hits the entire community of Seminole all the way up to Lubbock and all the way through Midland. Lord, I thank you that all of Texas shall be saved. All of Texas shall be on fire. All of Texas shall know the glory of Almighty God in manifestation. Jesus. Rain your joy. Rain your peace. Fire. Rain your love. What's happening? <laughs> Don't think for a second that it's this spot that's somehow magical. I dare you to ask the Lord right now to just hit you and touch you right where you're at. Jesus. <laughs> Come here, what's your name? Ricky. 12. Ricky's 12. Ricky's 12. One, two. What's happening, Ricky? <laughs> Here's the thing. We've all been, in, and most of us have been in around laughter, and we've been around the joy. <laughs> You had me here for a purpose. You had me here for a reason, both of you. And I'm going to give the assignment God told me to tell you. It's not just about falling out. It's not just about running. It's not just about dancing. It's not just about having hands laid on you. It's not just about weeping. It's not just about joy only. It's what you do with it when you get it. It is not simply for us to roll around on the floor and laugh hysterically and say, Whoa, I can't wait till next year. Honey, you better get something more on you than that. You better wake up and say, I can't wait to go out of these four walls. I can't wait to go out these doors. I can't wait for the next person that comes in front of me. I've got to tell them about Jesus. I've got to tell them about how God is so good. You should be looking for somebody that needs your prayer. You should be looking for somebody that needs a word from God right out of your mouth. What's happening now, 15-year-old? <laughs> Father, I thank you. That every single hungry person in here tonight leaves here filled. And those that aren't quite yet hungry, Lord, I pray right now, stir them up. Jesus, step in the aisle. Lift your hands. 
Who's the captain of the ushers? Is it okay if he gets hit tonight? Does he have to work? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoa, it's dark back here. I want this whole row to join hands. See, now I don't want to pray. The lights are on. I'm just kidding. Just let that just flow right through you. Praise the Lord. Hold out this hand. I want you just to gently lift your hands up, lift your neighbor's hand up, and receive what God has for you. Say, Jesus, come on, Ro. Say, Jesus, we want everything you have for us. Fill us fresh tonight. Fire! Glory to God. Hey. Woo, missions, missions, missions. Ha ha ha. Shalivende. Kasalorek is shota. Lift up your hands, sir. Lift up both hands. Father, anoint this man. the pain in your body. <laughs> there it goes. There it goes. Lift him back up. I walked by this man. I said, where's the pain? He said in his knee. But God just gave him a brand new kneecap. Come on, let's walk. It's all. It's healed. There it goes. Ah, there it left. Did you just feel that change? <laughs> oh, let's go up these stairs, sir. I'm sorry that you're used to this but I never get tired of it he is such a good God and his mercy always endures forever how long how long was that you're the God of miracles how long was this what was the injury you had in your knee I uh, twisted it, and uh, it's been hurting me for a long time. Would you say like months or years? Yeah, a long, long time, long time. Hallelujah. It's gone. What, what did you feel in there? I just, I just, I just felt it was gone. And it was when we started walking. When I came in, I had, I had to sit down all the time because I keep hurting. I stand up, I keep hurting, hurting. And when you went over and prayed for me, I just said, it left. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to stand right there on that second step. Okay. You ready? You're healed. Come back up. Was there any pain? No, sir. No pain. You pray in the Holy Ghost? Glory to God. Come on, let's rejoice. Oh, come on, let your mouth do what your hand keeps trying to do. We shout unto God with a voice of triumph. 
We shout unto God with the voice of praise. We shout unto God with the voice of triumph. We shout unto God. A hernia that was right here in front of me was healed 2,000 years ago right now. Father, I give you praise. Somebody on my right and your left, your left ear just popped open. You can hear. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody was having the beginning stages of arthritic pain in your right hand. It's gone. Begin to squeeze it and move it. All that pain's gone. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I take authority over lumps, bumps, growths, and tumors. Go in the name of Jesus. If you have a lump or a bump or a growth or a tumor in a private place, go check yourself. It's gone. Come back and testify. Jesus. A bladder infection right here to my, like right here, just, just right in here, healed in Jesus' name. Jesus, we give you praise. <sighs> a vertebrae in your neck. The doctor says that in your family, you're already predispositioned to it. And it's like it's been uh, fusing together. And an accident seemed to like speed that up. It's unfusing right now. Father, I give you praise. Thank you, Lord. As a matter of fact, who is that? Quickly, come up here. Right here. Come on. The moment you do, it unfuses. I'm telling you. Glory to God. I'm not missing it. Thank you, Jesus. Who is it that was having the neck issue with the fusing? You're in this section. Glory to God. There's somebody over here who's been having pain in the neck that almost came up and you thought it was you. You can come up and get healed too. Hallelujah. Because he did it 2,000 years ago. God gives me the hard ones. He'll call out the easy ones and then he'll make me go to the ones that don't want to get out of their chair. Ha, ha, ha. I'm real good friends with the guy that owns the light switch in here. It's right here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes the Lord will play hot, cold, hot, cold with me. He just told me, you're getting warmer. Come on, I know you're right here. You don't have to fall out to get your neck healed. Quickly, 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 meet me right here, right now. Jesus. Come on. Why do you have to make me? Why? How old are you? Twelve. Twelve? What is it with the twelve-year-olds in here tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Are you his mama? I want you to spank him for not being obedient, okay? That's between you and the Lord, but... You think you need a whooping? Uh-uh. They never do. What's your name, buddy? Blake. I like you, Blake. What was... What would have been... Ma, ma, ma. Thank you, Jesus, for the call of God that's on his life. There's been attacks on this young man ever since he was born. And I break them. No more. No more. Hedge of protection is on this young man in the name of Jesus. And he will do exactly what you've called him to do, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With fire. With boldness. What was happening with your neck? Um, it felt tight right here. Move it. Can 
you hear it? It's not tight. Come on, let those watching by live stream think that there's something manifesting. <laughs> Lift your hands. Father, I thank you and praise you. As a matter of fact, go over there. Stir them back up. Get all those 12-year-olds while you're at it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It starts to freak people out when you go right to the person you're calling out. Don't be freaked out. We shouldn't be freaked out that God will use people. Amen? Amen? Come here. Hold out your hands. Hold them out in front of you like you're receiving something from Him. Jesus. Who's that person that's over here that had the pain in the hand, the arthritis? It's gone. Who is that? Quickly, quickly, quickly. You going to make me come to your 12-year-old behind? Come on now. You're right in here. I know you are. I'll come and get you in a second. Wouldn't it be better to appear obedient than disobedient if I come and get you? Jesus. Well, I'm going to tell you what I've heard. It's bigger than you think. It's bigger than you've been dreaming. It's bigger than you've been praying. Oh, yeah. And the help is coming. The help is already on its way. But continue to build yourself, not just a group. Continue to stay at a place of leadership where you're leading yourself to His presence every day, not just leading a group. And the miracles that you've asked the Lord to see, you'll see. The boldness you've been asking the Lord to step into, you'll step into. As a matter of fact, it's already for you, says the Lord. Fire! Now, Lord, pour that out on Him. Jesus. All right. Arthritic hand. Where are you? Well, it's not anymore. You were healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Pain is gone. The pain is gone. The pain is gone. Jesus. Jesus. I know I'm closer. This is really weird. The Lord showed me it's three people, and you're right here. Is that you, ma'am? Yes, wave at me if that's you. Is it you too, sir? And then you as well? Oh, you're good. All right, praise the Lord. I thought it was right here. It is? Go ahead and move it. It's healed in Jesus' name. No more pain. Hallelujah. I'll get right over here. It's feeling better. Go. What's happening here, sir? My hand was always hurting, so I, I could never have figured out what it was. And that's all gone. And no more pain. No more pain. Squeeze my hand. Okay, now the pain is transferred. Thank you. Fire gun. Come here, sister. Step out. Is it more important that I go to them? What's happening here? I, I, I could not do this, literally. I could not close my hands. <laughs> I did not know what was happening to me. <laughs> my neck's not hurting either. <laughs> on the back of my neck did you hear that she's had a bump or a knot on the back of her neck and it's gone father thank you for healing this knot head
fire of God. Okay, hold on just a second. How long? It's been like five years. He had an accident. He was working in a mechanic shop and his hand got like in the hood where her hood was. So your hand was like almost smashed in that machine? How many years ago? That's about three years ago. Three years ago. Move your hand again. Here, hold it up. Do that. That I mean, that would have been painful. Like this. Sometimes. Not all the time. Sometimes it came. But now you can move it like that? I believe God wants you to get a Harley. Just be led. You know what? I don't mind clapping. Clapping's good. We're working on our church that we started a year ago to learn how to clap on really any beat. One, two, three, or four. I don't care. Pick one and clap. But then when it comes to really giving God the glory, I think sometimes we, we, uh, we, we depend too much on making noise here and not out of here. I want you to lift up your clapping hands and I want you to give him a shout of praise right now. We worship you, Jesus! Come on, give him praise! Give him praise! Give him praise! Give him glory! Give him honor! Oh, you're so good, God! You're so good! Oh! What just say? Ah, I believe in you, Lord. I believe in you. We were in a church in uh, South, South Texas, almost near the border. And uh, it had been two years prior that I was in prayer, and the Lord said, You will enter into a church that will not be able to stop praising me. Huh. I just wrote it down, and I said, Okay. We will enter into a church one day that won't stop praising Him. Sounded good, sounded powerful, I accepted it. And then we got invited to this church that had heard about us in the area. And we just went in and picked up that, that meeting and went in there. And they introduced us. And they just began to shout unto God. They began to praise so loudly. And I thought, oh, this is awesome. If every church could be like this, you know, that's what I was thinking, you know. And, and they're just praising and worshiping for about five minutes. Now, that's a long time straight. Come on, how many of y'all know that five seconds, you're just about tapped out? Come on, five minutes, it went on. And then I even opened up my Bible and my notes and getting it all ready. And I'm like, wow, they're really on fire now, aren't they? Ten minutes goes by. Fifteen minutes goes by. I started getting a little irritated. I'm serious, because I felt like I had a message. Come on, ministers, you know. But that's when God is trying to let you know that sometimes your message isn't as important as the messenger showing up like that. Come on now. And so, 20 minutes goes on, and it's deafening. I remember another church let out early and they came running over to be in our service. I saw them walk in and I know they saw my face and I was sitting there going, you know, it, man, they just won't be quiet. They just keep shouting. They keep praising God. And it was so loud. She went outside of the church to call her mother to let her hear all these people praising God at the top of their voices. And she goes, Mom, I don't know if you can hear me, but it looks like we're connected. It was that loud outside of the church, too. It was to the place, you know, where it gets really loud and almost sounds uh, like, you know, you got something stuck in your ear. It's so deafening. And the Lord, I went and sat down, and the Lord says, I, I want you to stand back up and give me honor. And I said, well, what's going on? He said, this is the church I told you that you would enter and they wouldn't stop praising me. And here you are sitting down instead of joining in. I believe I'm going to enter into a church, and this might even be one of them, to where they will just continue to praise God because of how good He is. You don't need a bouncy ball on a screen that's following words. You don't need somebody to stir you up. You just look at your God and say, He healed me. He saved me. He set me free. He delivered me. You don't know, but maybe on the other side of your praise is your breakthrough tonight. Come on!
Behold the worship leaders. Come on, what did we hear preached last night by Pastor Tracy? Don't let a seducing spirit keep you from worshiping God with all you got tonight. Don't let a seducing spirit keep you from moving in the flow of the Holy Spirit. Come on, some of you people that are on fire, catch your row on fire. Catch your section on fire. Some of you people that are on fire, begin to stop being ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. If we're ashamed in here, then I know we'll be ashamed out there. We've got to get to a place where we'll lift up our voice and lift up a shout and realize that God's better than a Boston red sock. God's better than an L.A. Dodger. God's better than a Dallas Cowboy. Come on now. He's worthy of greater shout. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Is it okay for people to go get their kids now? If you have kids and the children's come back in here real quick. We got about 15 more minutes that I see and I want them in on this too. Glory to God. Oh, if you could do that, just be a blessing and do it quickly. Do it expeditiously. Go and get those sweet little fireballs. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bring them into this presence. Ha 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 ha. Come on, begin to pray in the Holy Ghost with me. Come on, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Let that bubble out of you. Let that river come out of you. Come on, bring it up. Come on, lumps and bumps and growths and tumors are disappearing. Severe accidents are being healed. People that have had pains for years being set free and delivered right now. Father, I give you praise. Mental bondage in the name of Jesus. Going. Hallelujah. You know, our, our, our roots with the DeLay family go very deep. When we launched our church in uh, June of last year, Chris DeLay, their son, their favorite son is what I've heard. He, they didn't say that. He's absolutely not the favorite. Okay. But no, Chris, uh, he, he was such a blessing to us, and he came and helped us get our church launched. And then I got a call from his dad one day that I think was set up by his son, actually. But anyway, He said, hey, can I have my son back? <laughs> Let me ask you this. When you're good friends with somebody, and they say, can I have my son back, what do you say? Yes. I mean, it just didn't make sense. I mean, it, 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 that I would say anything other than that. But I also had the opportunity to do uh, a couple of camp awakenings, I think, with uh, their eldest son, Ben. He helped us in our monthly meetings when we first stepped out from Rama. And uh, great drummer, great minister. And I remember that night... That first, I think it was the first night, hit me so strong that there were people there that were literally not just dealing with the spirit of suicide, but literally contemplating and planning. Now, I only th thought maybe just a handful of people. I mean, there was a lot of people there, a few hundred, but I thought, well, maybe, you know, three or four or five, six, you know, maybe. Uh, say I'm listening.
when I gave the call for them to be set free from that foul spirit Pastor Todd was there Chris was there they lined up all the way around the building that night I was shocked to see how many young people were dealing with that spirit but got set free that night all the way around the am i exaggerating when you saw that line of all those young people dealing with the spirit of suicide what were you thinking we are getting texts calls messages to this day saying thank you for praying I was planning to kill myself the day after Camp Awakening. And I'm here to tell you right now, I recognize that spirit's in here trying to mess with people too. With heads bowed and eyes closed, just for a minute, I'm going to also pray for those that have been dealing with that spirit. And tonight you will be set free and you will live and not die. You already know who you are, so heads bowed, eyes closed. I'm going to count to three when I do. If that's you, I want you just to quickly slip your hand up in the air and allow me to pray for you. One, two, three. Those that have been dealing with that, come up here right now to the front and let's take care of business come on give them a big round of applause as they come because they need your support come on if you lifted your hand should have lifted your hand you've been dealing with this foul spirit it's going right now in the name of jesus come on these that have lifted their hands are coming right now come on come on come on come on let it rain let it rain let it rain jesus come on as they're coming there's more coming let it rain, Jesus. Let it rain. And open the floodgates of hell. No more tormenting Let nightmares. No more tormenting voices. Let no more rain. thoughts of suicide. No more I'm not good open enough. No more of I can't. No, I don't know what I'm going to do. There's no way out. There is. No more, no more, no more. The moment I lay hands on you, that thing is going to break off of you. The moment I lay hands on you, I'm telling you like I know that I know. It's already defeated. It's already gone. It's under your feet. You are more powerful than it. On your weakest day, you are more powerful than the devil on his greatest day. You are being set free right now. 2,000 years ago on the cross. Come on, eyes shut. Hands lifted, hands lifted all up here. Come on, you're being set free right now. Father, I thank you. Evil, go. Darkness, go. Spirit of suicide, go. In the name of Jesus, you will. I'm going to go fast. Oppression, go! Go! Now open the blood gates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the blood gates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Somebody's getting it. <laughs> well, you don't understand. I was, I was molested. I was repeatedly molested. That doesn't matter. We forgive them. We let them go. God's restoring every bit of you right now in the name of Jesus. People are bullying me. They don't understand me. They're making fun of me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You aren't supposed to fit in. God has created you to be unique. Stop trying to fit into something that's going the wrong way anyway. You are set free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Whom the Son sets free is free 
indeed. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Somebody that's free, begin to praise God with me right now. Lord, I pray a hedge of protection over each of these people. Cocoon them in your glory. Come here, sister. When's the last time you felt this kind of peace? It's been a long time. Cocoon them in your presence. In your glory. Now you have to forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Cocooned. Come here, brother. Protection. Cover them with your glory. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, one more time. Every hand lifted. <laughs> Whew, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Oh, I can't tell you how good the message was tonight. Whew. But thank God for the Holy Ghost. What, what if we would have shut down at 9 o'clock? There's a chance that there could be somebody's blood on our hands this coming week. But guess what? The only blood on our hands now is the blood of Jesus just soaked in victory. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You all can stay up here as long as you want. Cassidy, would you bring me my Bible, please? Just my Bible. Just my Bible and just some water. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, sweetie. Sister, what did you feel go through you? You're free. You're free. You're free. All that oppression left you. Praise God. <laughs> Glory to God. Turn with me, if you would, just very quickly. I'm not going to take up much time. I think that's one of the things that we need to get clear is why a ministry gift is in a conference. A ministry gift is in a conference, especially this one, 
is because I think you're going to be shocked at what we hear tonight in a good way, in a relieving way. But this is not just so that we can bring a message to bring a handful of hungry people to break through. This is a church-wide event that has been a shift that's been coming now for several months. Things that you've shared with me. Things that you've shared with me. Things that you've gone through. All the staff changing. It's been a strategic positioning. And the Lord says, everybody's in place. Ah. If this is your church, don't you back off of it. You're in your right place. Come on, I've driven through Seminole. And at the end of those five minutes, I want you to know, I'm rounding up. At the end of those five minutes, I'm telling you right now, you are in the right place. Glory to God. Matthew chapter 5, let's begin reading here. It's the Beatitudes, Jesus speaking here. Thank you, worship team. You're such a blessing. Don't you love the worship team? Well, listen, three of them do. I'm glad one of them was your wife. This team, they're singing till they're hoarse. They're playing till their fingers bleed. It's just good old Holy Ghost worship up in here. How you doing, Ro? Come over here, sir. Everybody's looking up Matthew chapter 5. I hear pages turning, so. <laughs> what happened up there? I just got a vision of heaven, and God told me that if you want to wield a special power, you got to do something special. You want something uncommon, you got to do something uncommon. And I just, just seen like... like a running back breaking through the defensive line, just, just breaking through and just going through and, and to, to one purpose and one goal. And, and I mean, it just, just shook me. Did you hear what he said? It's like he just broke through. Look at that word. How many of y'all sense already that breakthrough is something that has already begun to happen in a greater measure than you even anticipated? Thank God for the prayer warriors. Thank God for the prayer team. And I'm telling you right now, thank God for your hunger. But I want you to see something tonight. Tell me you're going to listen and you're going to expect. And we're going to go higher tonight on purpose. Verse 6, Matthew 5, blessed. That word blessed is empowered to prosper. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Now, I've said this here before, but I have not connected the verses together like I'm getting ready to. The Lord downloaded some things in me, and I knew something wild was going to happen tonight, like it has been. Aren't you thankful to see that different people that were thinking that maybe this life had nothing more to offer them, now they realize that they have something to offer life? Are you not excited about that? I guarantee you, if that was one of your family members up there today, if that was you up there today, you'd be thankful. But this is what the Lord showed me about this. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness. This is the thing I want you to understand. If you'll hunger and thirst after Him, if you choose to hunger and thirst after Him, He's saying these words, you are in charge of your own infilling. No, it's as God wills. Can I ask you this? Don't you think He wants you to be filled? I'll show you He does. 
Read the verse again. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. He doesn't even put any other conditions on there. He actually leaves it up to you and your choice and your will to hunger and thirst after him. And he said, you shall be filled. You shall be empowered to prosper and you shall be filled. This is what's awesome is you don't need a pastor to get you filled. You don't need a meeting to get you filled. You don't need a great song to get you filled. All you need is to make the choice If nobody on my row is getting it, I'm getting it If nobody here tonight's getting it, I'm getting it If I look like a fool, I'm still getting it Because I'm going to be one empowered to prosper fool Turn with me to John 19 Glory to God So thankful for the delays in their family And the covenant that we have with them we went uh, flying today, literally. They asked me, they said, do you want to go flying? I said, sure. Can I drive? There's a lot of things involved with it, so they, they explained to me why it shouldn't be good that I drive. But there was a leg on the way back where the man said, you want to drive? And I just looked back and I smiled at my brother. And I said, pray. And we did this selfie while we're flying in the air at 6,500 feet. And I looked at the picture uh, this afternoon, and he's in the back photobombing going. But I don't think he was faking. <laughs> oh, well, glad to be here. John 19, verse 28, this is the story of Jesus right here as he's, pass, he's, he's, he's passing from this life into the next. They've crucified him, but he didn't get murdered. He laid his life down as a sacrifice. Amen. You can't murder somebody who lays their life down. You can only murder somebody who does not want their life taken. He came to be a sacrifice. And it says here in verse 28, John 19, 28, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now, isn't that amazing when you read that? You're thinking to yourself. He said, blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And one of the words that came out of his mouth was, I thirst. That phrase came out, I thirst. Well, we know he was thirsty in the natural, but it's amazing. And when you read the rest of the story, it says that the soldiers offered him up this sponge type material for him to drink and it had vinegar in it. Vinegar is known to dehydrate even more. Just to show you the, the, the mean spirit that was there and how, you know, he's thirsty and he's, they're giving him something to drink that's going to dehydrate him even more. So when you say, I thirst, more than likely, it's because you are responding to a fact that you're needing something. And the biggest deception in the body of Christ right now is that the devil, the seducing spirits that were so eloquently spoken of last night by Pastor Tracy Harris, are on so many people in church, letting them think that they don't need anything, and yet they're sitting there thirsting and hungering for more than they ever thought possible, but do not think that they are, and won't even say that they are. But Jesus, hanging on the cross, even had that come out and said, I thirst. But they gave him something to dehydrate him even more, vinegar. But when he took that last drink, he was literally taking on everything that would make you a dry, spirited individual. And he was exchanging that so that out of your belly could flow rivers of living water. Come on now. And when we see Jesus hanging on the cross, I want you to know I was praying about this. I was meditating on this. And he showed me that when they put him on the cross, he was here on the ground. They nailed him on the cross, his hands and his feet to the cross. But when they lifted him up and elevated him, he was now sp suspended between earth and heaven he was in a transitional position that while he was on the cross dying for you and I not just himself 
but dying for you and I. He was in a transitional position, suspended on a cross that was meant to keep him here, murder him and leave him here in the devil's eyes. But instead, he became a sacrifice, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lamb slain before the foundations of the world, hanging on a cross, suspended for you and I, that would be touching one moment earth and touching heaven, suspended at the same time so that he could exchange everything that this earth would try to make you thirsty and hungry for to give you something that will fill you from heaven on this earth. But then he goes on and says this. After he received the vinegar, he said, come on, somebody shout it with me. It is finished. I'm glad somebody's helping me. Shout it again. It is finished. Now declare it over your life. It is finished. What's finished? Everything that the enemy is needing in your life to keep a stronghold and a bondage in your life, that has already been broken by Jesus Christ. I hope I can get an amen in here anyway. What if I told you when he said it is finished, he wasn't hoping that somehow, some way, you would eventually get the revelation that breakthrough is going to be needed. What if I told you that when he said it is finished, that was when your breakthrough started? Ah, come on now. What if I told you that stuff that you're dealing with now that's given you the impression you need to be broken out of, you've already been broken out of 2,000 years ago, and he's just looking for you to start hungering and thirsting after righteousness and not focusing and complaining on what you're going through. Turn with me to Luke chapter 4. Now, this is what's crazy about this. Is you see, Jesus says it is finished. That means suicide, it's finished. Alcoholism, it is finished. Drug addiction, it is finished. Wrong motives, wrong thoughts, pornography, it is finished. Spousal abuse, it is finished. Dark thoughts, it is finished. But he has given you the key to live a life that's broken through. If I told you that you were already broken through, it has a certain sound. If I told you you were already broken through, it has a certain look. If I told you that you were broken through, it has a certain aura about it that draws others that says, if God can do it for him, he can do it for me. But he did it 2,000 years ago when he said it is finished. He didn't just say it is finished because he's completing the law only. He was also looking ahead, not just in the past. He was looking ahead at everything that you would face. So that once you had the revelation and the realization that when you accepted his blood, his stripes, and his name, and you got born again, and you started exercising this, the salvation that he's given you, he then realized that when you understood that, you didn't just need to hope that there was some kind of sovereign move to set you free he knew that he sovereignly gave you his name that whenever you needed to exercise it whenever you needed to use it you could say in the name of Jesus I've already been set free how many of y'all know the scripture whom the son sets free is well we quote that but are you free indeed the answer is yes because why say it again it is say in my life it is finished. In my house, it is finished. In my life, it is finished. Come on. Breakthrough has a look. Breakthrough has a sound. Unless you want attention. It's hard to help somebody that wants attention and they're like, oh, I need this. Hmm. Luke chapter 4, we see this. Are y'all all right tonight? In Luke chapter 4, we see this. Comes out of the wilderness, empowered by the Holy Spirit. 
And if you're not careful, you'll think because Luke 4 comes way before John 19 that we're out of order, but we're not because he's prophetically speaking here, and I'll show you what he's talking about. He's talking about if I'm operating in it now, you're going to operate in it after the cross because it is also finished. I'm going to show you the key to your breakthrough right here. The key to staying broken through is found in this. Verse 17, And there was delivered unto Jesus the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and he sat down, and all the eyes of them that were in the synagogue were now fastened upon him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. The moment you begin to understand why it's so important to hear the word of God, you'll realize that when it enters into my ears and I receive it, it's now fulfilled in me. Why is it so important to meditate on the Word? Because there's some stuff you don't know that's been written about you that once you get that and it's now in your ears and you've got it in your spirit, that's when that Scripture is now fulfilled in you. So you may be dealing with the need for breakthrough. You may be really feeling the effects of that imprisonment. You may be really feeling the effects of that, those desires and that, that, that crutch and all these other bondages. You may be really feeling that. But the moment this Scripture is fulfilled in your ears, that's the moment you walk out of of the unlocked prison cell. And that's the definition of bondage that God gave me years ago. He says, son, it's when my people that are called by my name, whenever they're in bondage, they're not actually in bondage. They're deceived into sitting in an unlocked prison cell. That means you can get up at any time and walk out. Whew. So what's the key to staying broken through? It's the same key that breaks you through. Somebody say the anointing. Come on now. It's the anointing that breaks and destroys the yoke of bondage. You and I are already anointed. You might as well just shout it. I'm anointed. But I didn't go to Bible school. Guess what? You're still anointed. Say I'm anointed. I've only been going to this church for two weeks. But guess what? You're still anointed. Say I'm anointed. Why? Because you're not anointed by your works. You're anointed by what he did when he said it is finished. But somebody does, you know, wait a minute now. How does that correspond to what we're talking about with thirst? When I start to hunger and thirst for this, I'm not hungering and thirsting just merely to come to church or a conference and get my deliverance and then hope it works for the next year. I want to be so broken through that I can bring breakthrough to everybody I come in contact with. See, when you really step into that power, what you're doing is you're not just needing something for yourself. You realize now something flows out of you. And what I want you to see is this, is when he got up and said, well, he actually sat down. That's pretty good, too. He sat down and said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. It is fulfilled because it is finished. It is fulfilled because it is finished. If this is all I give you for the next few moments is that you're already broken through. Do not leave here irresponsible and just say, well, if I'm already broken through, then fine, whatever, whatever. No, there is something else you need to do to meet those requirements. Not a works mentality, but a mentality that works. Colossians chapter 3, and we'll close with this. Praise you, Jesus. It is fulfilled because it is finished. Mm. Glory to God. My favorite thing is to try and find scriptures that I'm so used to going to when I'm drunk, and it's like, I, I, okay, is it an old, old or New Testament? I'm just drunk now. I'm trying to find it. Colossians chapter 3. Some services are not going to be the kind you run and dance and shout like we did in the beginning when you start talking like this. Because now we're depending on ministers to get us broken through when I'm telling you Jesus already broke you through. 
It's the same thing as we go from glory to glory, right? Amen? We go from faith to faith, amen? And we go from strength to strength, amen? But yet we keep going from meeting to meeting. (laughs) I want to get to the place to where I'm living this in such a way like what I was talking with Pastor Tracy about this morning. That, that you're living this thing beyond the pulpit. You're living this thing beyond your Sunday morning attendance. You're living this thing to such a degree that when you're praying, you're seeing things like what I'm about to tell you. A lady came to our church. She was visiting. These things happen outside the church too. She came and she looked like she was about eight, nine months pregnant. She didn't tell me any different. I didn't know any different. I asked her, can I pray for you? She said, yes. And I just began to wave my hand in front of her midsection like this. And in front of the entire audience was just watching. I even had to double take. Her stomach began to just deflate in front of everybody. I'm looking at that and I go, did your stomach just deflate? She's weeping and she goes, yes, all the inflammation is gone. Some severe intestinal disorder and completely healed. Her stomach just disappeared. I had other people coming up to me and saying, if I can get my gym membership refunded, would you pray for my stomach? Man, you know what kind of miracle ministry you would have with that? I went to, I wobbled into his meeting. I was a big, big old heifer. But God's made me beautiful again. I'm a lean, mean fighting machine. Glory to God. Last night of the revival we were having, we've had revivals that have lasted two weeks, three weeks, 15 weeks. I remember one that was so just monumental in our lives was that 30-day revival straight every single night in Milwaukee. We're up on the East Coast on another revival, and this man came up to me. He's the worship leader, and he says to me, he said, do not leave our church without giving everything that you have. There's something that you have, and our church is missing it. And I'm telling you, I, of everybody else, if nobody else, will, I will pull it out of you. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I've got to have more. He's the worship leader. And I said, okay, absolutely. Now, you know, I mean, you're feeling like you do that anyway, but it's amazing how much people play in that part. How much do you want to be infilled? You could be getting it right there where you're sitting if you want it. But I'm so used to people laying hands on me. That's okay. What if God lays hands on you? Just because you're hungry. Just because you're thirsty. Right there, being filled. He comes. It's the last night of the meeting. It's like four or five nights. And I just said to him, I said, worship team, come down and worship. Show us how to worship God. Over here, you stand in front of the same stage right now and face the other way and start worshiping God. Lead us into worship that way. We don't want any instruments. We want you and I to be the instruments. Oh, that was uncomfortable. That was crazy. The first guy down off was the piano player, the the worship leader, and he's standing there in front just worshiping God. That's called hungering and thirsting after righteousness. I know you're talking Colossians 3. We're going to close with that. But I want to give you this uh, illustration here. I looked up and his eyes were glued open into heaven. We began to worship there for 15 minutes. Easy. Pastors from all over that area, the East Coast, New Jersey, Philadelphia, were all there. And they were all running around the place. It was a crazy night, a spirit-filled night, an amazing night. People were hungering and thirsting. But there was something different about that young man, that worship leader. He was on the front, in the very front. His hands were up in the air, and his eyes were glued open. He was in a trance, what we had heard about Amy Simple McPherson and what she would go through. Amy Simple McPherson was in a a trance as she was ministering. And at the end of three days, when the greatest crowd had gathered around her in St. Louis, she came out of her trance, finished her message, and gave a large altar call. What would happen if Transformation Church of Seminole started having extended meetings again? I could tell by that Catholic response... 
That was pretty exciting. But I'm going to tell you what I tell my church sometime. And that's why they're always there early. That's why they're always there getting their seat. I said, you better get here because somebody might take your seat that's hungrier than you. Oh, glory to God. You can't take football to heaven with you. So watch this. I was going, I was ministering, I was preaching, and everybody else had taken their seat. He was still on the front, and he still has his hands lifted. So I'm thinking, this kind of, this might be a little fake or something. I don't know what's going on. So when I would go by and I'd minister, I would stop and do that just to see if he would flinch. He wouldn't flinch at all. I know, that's honry, isn't it? You're sitting here believing for the glory, and I'm messing with the guy. He's in heaven, and here he really went to heaven. And, and I didn't know that. I just thought, well, you know, maybe he's in a funk or something. And I'd go, and God said, you know, and he didn't flinch at anything. And I'm thinking, wow. And every time I walked by him, I felt like this radiation of holiness and glory. At the end of the meeting, he was still there. And we went out to eat afterwards, about eight, nine, ten of us. And he was sitting there. He had the most unusual look on his face. Had the most unusual, peaceful, confident, weird smile on his face. It was kind of almost not like him because he was very chatty, the guy. Very witty. But, but he was so quiet and he just had this weird smile on his face. And I just finally said, after all this other banter, I said, what happened to you tonight? And he looked at me and he took a breath and he said, I went to heaven. Do you all believe that that can even happen? I believe it's going to start happening more than you ever thought possible. He looks at me and he goes, you, or the, the, the guy next to me goes, you. And he starts telling him everything Jesus told him. Then he goes around the table, says you. And he starts reading everybody's mail. The whole table's weeping. It was as if we were listening to one of Jesus' disciples just rip a message to everybody at like our own Last Supper. I thought, this is amazing. The glory of God was so thick in that restaurant. And I'm thinking, my God, this is, this is amazing that this would happen in one of our services and that people would actually check out and go to heaven. And I'm telling you, from that service on, it was no longer a mistake. It was no longer a happenstance. It was no longer an accident. We started having every single age group and race that started having actual visitation where they went to heaven and came back with orders from headquarters. My daughter was one of them. We're having a, a, a children's service. I mean, do I look like I know what I'm doing when it comes to just preaching to children? I don't. I, I, I was asked, I was honored to come up and do a conference where we would minister to the children. Like this young age group that's all here just sitting here listening. I, I, I was saying to them, I was like, listen, Jesus is real. The glory is real. We started talking about heavenly encounters. And one kid after another, there was more than we could count. We're getting up in this large church. It was the Boar's Church. And they were getting up, all these kids, even Pastor and I talked about this, and he was like, I started to think it was a little unusual. All these kids had this kind of an encounter, and they got up and started testifying. And he says, I got rocked. I had to change the way I thought about things. He said, there is no doubt in my mind as their pastor that they had these encounters. So what's different are we too far south from the East Coast? Are we too far south from the West Coast to have these kind of encounters? No, I'm telling you, there's going to be some here tonight that when you lay your head down, immediately you're going to be in the Spirit. And God's going to show you things. Jesus is going to manifest to some of you. Some of you are going to have angelic visitations. I cannot hand that out. I cannot give that to you. I cannot make that happen. I can only tell you as a messenger, this is what the Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you. Be ready, because some of you in here that aren't even wanting one are about to get one. Some of you that don't even feel that you're called are about to see the next 10 years of your life unfold and what you are called to do in this church. Some of you that have been praying God give me a vision, give me a vision listen, it's not about you just having a vision. It's what do you do after you see what you see what do you do after you hear what you hear it's about setting your affections on things that are greater than that which surrounds you. How come I can't get my breakthrough? How come I can't 
can't go any higher. Well, let me ask you this, honey. What is it that you constantly surround yourself with that is creating a wall? What is it that you are putting yourself in that is creating a ceiling? What is it that you are going through constantly, nonstop, and circling around about, but refuse to come out of the box that you have created for yourself? I am available for hugs if you so desire. Colossians chapter 3. Glory to God. These are not normal meetings. <laughs> There's a lot of slack getting jerked out of the vision. Whew. As a matter of fact, you know how you've been feeling like you guys have been just so stretched, 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 stretched. Don't you dare even think for a minute about what it's going to look like to retire. I'm so glad to hear you say that. Oh, you're just getting started. It's like you just keep getting stretched, stretched. It's like you keep putting pressure and you're moving forward and it feels like some things are just kind of like, uh. It's like, why do I feel like we're being held back? We're being held back. You're not being held back. The Lord is taking you like a catapult. And the further He's stretching you, the further He's putting that tension on you, the further He's going to launch you when He finally lets it go. And like I told Pastor Daphne, I'm going to say it so that the whole church can get over it. Monumental. Mind-boggling amounts of money are getting ready to flow into their hands. I'm telling you. Because it's not to make them in a place of a better retirement because they've already said they're not retiring. Amen. Amen. It's so that they can complete the vision that's on their life. The vision that's on their life, the call that's on their life, the mandate and the mantle that's on their life is greater than what some of us have just thought about good old Todd, good old Daphne. Aren't they good old people? They are, but they're also men and women of God that have been commissioned from heaven, that have a mandate from heaven for this last hour in these end times. And this end time harvest is also dependent on the person that's sitting on your left and on on your right. God is wanting to use you. He's given you the choice. He's put that call on your life. They've chosen. They almost went a certain route, but they came back this way and God has been taking out all the air bubbles that has been in this vision. God is taking out all of that slack that has been in this vision. And in purity, it's about to be released. And those that get on board are going to fly with them and be a part of that. And I hope you get a hold of this. It's some of that mind-boggling fun financial blessing is going to be coming through people that are sitting here right now. Colossians 3, verse 1. If you then be risen with Christ, say I'm risen with Him. Guess what then? When He said it is finished, you're also finished with Him. Mm. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above Above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not things on this earth. Wow. That doesn't mean you don't have any care for the things that go on around you. It's just, it's there in proper perspective. Huh. How many of y'all like to fish in here? I knew I smelled something. It does smell. I knew the guitar player was a fisherman because of all the scales that he was playing. If you wanted it better, you should have prayed. Stop it. Seriously, and that bass player? I know. This is what he showed me. When you put things in perspective and put the things of this earth in perspective, filtered through the things of heaven, you can drop a line into the water, catch an earthly fish, and pull out of its mouth heavenly blessings. Pastor Tracy was telling us a story, I believe it was last night, of about a missionary man that was... Uh, 
flying overseas and in the middle of his flight the engine caught on fire this big like 747 and everybody could see that the engine was on fire and it was kind of causing some havoc and the man of God looked out and he was praying but he saw that the fire wasn't going out they have internal fire extinguishers to help with those engines which is good to know isn't it I didn't know that but what's not good to know is it wasn't working in this case ah! so anyway he looked over and he began to see angels on that wing he saw one angel grab that turbine engine and yank it off of the wing and threw it off the wing. The, and others saw it too, not just this man of God, but others saw angels underneath the wings helping them get to where they needed to land. And they landed safely. And when they looked at the engine that was missing, they said, there's no way that this plane could have landed the way you landed. It should have just crash but it landed perfectly as if everything was intact come on i'm telling you hebrews chapter one angels are ministering spirits sent forth us sent forth to us to minister to us for us and through us as heirs of salvation so when i set my affection on things above write this down it goes beyond just what my mind can conceive the reason it's hard for some of us to put our affection on things above is because it, it does involve our mind. Because as long as my mind stays unrenewed, I'll have a hard time receiving anything above. And what's dangerous about an unrenewed mind, people, is this. Is an unrenewed mind perceives that what you filter through, what you think at that time, you will think it's truth and accept it as truth. And it's dangerous with an unrenewed mind because you can only renew your mind with truth. Therefore, well, why would God do that? Why doesn't God accept me? Well, He loves you. He died for you. This isn't about Him accepting how you want to dress or what bathroom you want to go in at Target. This goes far beyond that. When I think God only does a thing a certain way, like, for instance, you can't lay hands on somebody and then shake all over the place. That's weird. That's not right. That's not God. That's an unrenewed mind yielding to a seducing spirit thinking it's truth. These young people up here that were laughing in the Holy Ghost, that's impossible. How is that just a show? Uh, no, it's not a show. It's a show of the devil openly, if anything, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. How is it that they get hit with the joy? Please don't miss this. How is it that they get hit with the joy and people get delivered of suicide? Come on. But we would rather sit and hear one more deep message that we do nothing with instead of getting excited about we can operate in this. Somebody say, I'm anointed. Because it has been fulfilled. Because he said it is finished. Last thing. When you put your mind to something, you're focused. When you put your mind to something, you're concentrating. When you put your mind to that thing, you're literally saying, okay. All right, I'm going to learn what I can. I'm going to observe what I can. I'm going to concentrate. I'm going to, I'm going to get this. I'm really thinking hard about it. But that's the problem. We've been in a, 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 about three decades of concentrating so much on the Word. God is saying, when you set your affections on things above, I don't want you just to concentrate. I want you to consecrate. What is Consecration. It's accepting that you're set apart, but you have something to do with it. Sometimes you've got to walk away and just say, you know what? I can't hang out with you all tonight. I I'm sorry. I know, but th this is my beliefs. This is my conviction. This is what I'm doing. I'm consecrating. I'm setting my things up. Yeah, you will be ridiculed. Yes, you will be persecuted. Yes, you will be made fun of. But guess what? When it's all said and done, don't you want to have a nice place in eternity when this is all said and done? Don't you want to have a slew of people that welcome you into heaven that said, hey, because you didn't get ashamed of the gospel, I'm here because of your life. I'm here because of what you said. I'm here because you laid hands and prayed for me. I'm here because you led me to Jesus. Come on now. Listen, never give your life over to somebody who never gave their life over to you. Jesus died for you and I. Well, I'm going to live for him. One last story. 
You're welcome. I can't wait to hear what happens tomorrow night because there's people here that are already starting to see some things and you already know, my God, I'm getting ready to see some things I've never seen before. As soon as you put your head down on the pillow, boom, in the spirit. I was trying to consecrate my life. I'd been going to Ramah. I had been studying. I'd been saturating in word for, you know, three, four hours, five hours a day. And so here's the weekend. What do you do on the weekend? We say it. We veg. We veg. Come on. I was doing this before veggie tales. You know, you just want some time alone. You know why? Because when you're taking in, taking in, taking in, and never giving out, you burn out. That's the danger of just sitting there and wanting to hear one more message you don't do anything with. I don't want you to burn out. I want you to burn for Him. My friend called me up. He said, come over and pray. We're going to pray. Me and another fellow, we're going to pray. Would you come over? Pray. There's something. There's urgency on me. Pray, pray, pray. And I was with Kenneth Copeland one time. That's one of the first times I had been around him and sitting at the dinner table. And I saw him get up and just walk off and leave. And I'm thinking, why did he just get up and walk off and leave? I looked over at Sister Gloria and I said, Sister Gloria, you know, is everything okay? She goes, what do you mean? I said, well, Brother Copeland just got up and left. Did I say something that offended him, you know? She goes, dear God, no, son, you hadn't said nothing at all. And I hadn't. I was thinking, did I say something, you know? But he just got up and left. She said, that's what Ken does. He gets up when God talks to him and he feels the urgency to pray. He'll just leave everybody and everything and go and pray. And so these guys are like, we got an urgency. We want you to come and pray. I'm like, I don't want to pray. I've been praying all week. Bad attitude. Setting my affections on things below. I get this call at midnight. I'm already asleep. My, it's the answering machine. Anybody remember what an answering machine is? You got your phone turned off, but your answering machine clicks, and you forgot to turn the volume down? Hey, thank you for calling. You know, you sit straight up in bed, and you're like, oh, my God. He's like, dude, pick up the phone. Answer the phone. Pick up your phone. Oh, my God. And I'm hearing sirens in the background, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, my friend, he needs me. But I don't have enough money to bail him out of jail. But, I, I mean, he, you know. And so I, I didn't know what was going on. So I pick up a phone. I said, what's going on? He said, bro, oh, my God, dude, you missed it. I said, what's going on? He said, we were over at my house praying. And I'm going to tell you this real quickly. At a certain time during the prayer, firefighters broke into the front and the back of his house kicked the doors in and came in with their gas masks and everything, picked them up onto their shoulders, carried them out and dumped them into the front yard until they cleared the house and found out there was no fire. You want to talk about a manifestation? The firefighters are all running around confused Cops are there, confused. They were like, this is the house. This is it. People, three different calls came in and said, there is a fire at this particular neighborhood on this street. We don't know the exact address, but you can't miss it. It's the one with all the fire coming off of the roof. The firefighters got there, found the house because they saw the roof that was on fire. They rushed into the house, and they searched the house and found that there was no fire. They went over and questioned my friends, what's going on? What did you do with the fire? <laughs> they explained to them that they didn't know what they were talking about, and then it hit them. Oh, come on. Just like that, it hit them. That the fire had to have been a, a manifestation that was visually seen from all around, and it was God. They began to tell these guys about Jesus in a nutshell. All of them on the front lawn were giving their life to Jesus and praying in the Holy Ghost. When you set your affections on things above, you don't just concentrate, you consen consecrate. You're already broken through. 
It's already finished. Let this scripture be fulfilled in your ears, in your heart, in your life right now. You are anointed. That is the key to staying broken through. But if you'll begin to focus on others that need a breakthrough and you begin to go up and say, listen, I got something on me and you need this. I got something in me. You need this. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. You need this. Come on. And when they say, well, what do I need to do? Just lift your hands. Let me pray. Come on. If you don't know Jesus, let's pray right now. I guarantee you, if half of you in here started leading people to Jesus. As a matter of fact, I'm going to ask this question that I asked our students when I taught personal evangelism at one of the world's greatest Bible schools at Ramah in Tulsa, Oklahoma, or Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. I'm going to ask this question. How many people in here have gotten somebody saved in the last year? Lift your hand. How many people have gotten somebody saved in the last six months? Lift your hand. How many people have gotten somebody saved this month? Lift your hand. How many people got somebody saved this week? Lift your hand. You see what I'm saying? The hands were slender, slimmer, slimmer. But if you'll put this into practice and set your affection on things above, hunger and thirst after the things of God, His righteousness, come on. Watch what ends up happening. Knowing that you already are a breakthrough, going somewhere to help somebody else break through, you start getting people saved. Well, what will they think of me? What will they think of me? Can I ask you a very serious question? We're at a crossroads. Everybody, nobody else is holding back in these meetings. What happens when you get to eternity and he says, well done. Johnny, you, you honored everybody. You're a, you're a gift to your church and to mankind, and you loved people, but you never led anybody to me. So in essence, you honored everybody but me, son. Do you want to hear that? Please say no. Your assignment. Bring somebody tomorrow night, Sunday Wednesday, get them plugged into church, get them into the cross training, get some people in here and take it as a personal mission that the fruit of being broken through is now me getting others broken through. Somebody shout, it is finished. Somebody shout it again, it is finished. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Lift your hands.